Okay. Good morning to everybody. So let me start the uh, next lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, 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 we'll wait. Yeah, it is still uh, not 10 o'clock. Two, three minutes, I will wait. Uh, meanwhile, if there is any question from anybody, uh, they can ask. Yeah. This is actually not a question. I want your uh, comment. Yeah. Uh, like uh, normally in curriculum, yeah. what happens in MSc curriculum is that uh, we don't have a course on quantum field theory. Okay. But we have a course on uh, nuclear physics. Yeah. And uh, this whatever you uh, taught in the last two, two lectures, yeah. Beta decay, yeah. is a part of the syllabus. Yeah. Uh, like uh, what you said, uh, you require some quantum field theory to understand thermal theory. Yeah. So, is it more or less just like uh, some kind of a uh, phenomenological sketchy okay. uh, way it is done? Yeah. So, do you have any advice how to do that without doing quantum field theory? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would say that without doing quantum field theory, particle physics itself cannot be done, especially weak interactions and standard model. Standard model is the theory of particle physics. For that, quantum field theory is absolutely necessary. That is why I built up a little bit of background. That is not enough, of course. So I would advise students to learn some quantum field theory. I will uh, give some references. There are very good books. I think there are uh, many books. But uh, let me mention J. J. Sakurai. Advanced Quantum Mechanics. It's called a quantum mechanics only, remember, not even quantum field theory, but still it contains uh, quantum field theory. In fact, in my courses in quantum field theory, in quantum mechanics, you may remember the Sunday classes, I did include quantum field theory, I mean quantum theory of radiation at least, at least quantum theory of radiation that is done very well in Sakurai's book. So I would advise students to go to that uh, uh, book. Uh, and not uh, it is not modern quantum mechanics by Sakurai and somebody that is not the book I am referring to. I am referring to a older book called Advanced Quantum Mechanics, which deals with uh, relativistic uh, uh, equation of uh, Dirac and the quantum theory of radiation and its simple applications. It is very nicely done. It is one of the most beautiful uh, discussions of quantum theory of radiation, which I always use in my lectures, even in quantum mechanics. Because the latter part of my quantum mechanics course is advanced to quantum mechanics. So naturally it includes quantum theory of radiation. You see quantum theory of radiation is absolutely necessary. Please remember, I will give uh, two points. Uh, one, uh, quantum theory itself started with the concept of photon by uh, Planck and Einstein. But they did not incorporate it into theory and that is possible only in quantum theory of radiation. The other thing is, if you look at, uh, uh, <coughs> if you look at uh, Bohr's theory or even Schrodinger's equation in quantum mechanics, it gives you energy levels, right? And uh, even the first excited uh, level is absolutely stable according to Schrodinger equation. And how does it radiate? It radiates only if you quantize electromagnetic radiation. The quantum fluctuations in vacuum of the quantum theory of radiation induce the electron in the first excited state to emit a quantum and come back. So even in the very uh, uh, <laughs> beginnings of quantum mechanics really need quantum theory of radiation. This is not recognized by most people. They just stop with the quantum, uh, I mean, uh, Schrodinger equation and they think that that is quantum. That is not enough. Schrodinger equation is not complete until you quantum, uh, at least have quantum theory of radiation. So that is what I would uh, say. <clears throat> so just go to Sakurai's book. And uh, you can always ask me questions also. Okay. 
that is my reply. Of course, I am not doing it that way now. I am doing it uh, uh, a full background to full quantum field theory, both the uh, uh, quantization of the electromagnetic field as well as quantization of even the electron field described by Dirac wave function. Dirac wave function becomes a quantum uh, <coughs> operator uh, creating and uh, destroying particles and uh, then only we can have Fermi's theory. In Fermi's theory, a proton, a neutron is desired and proton is created. How can you do Fermi's theory? See, Fermi was one of the earliest Fermi, uh, I mean, uh, it was only five years after Dirac introduced the quantum theory of radiation and, and also I think uh, Jordan and Wigner uh, did it for uh, fermion and Fermi could apply it, okay. And that is in… Yeah, uh, at least quantum theory of radiation, which is absolutely necessary to complete ordinary quantum mechanics. But if you want to consider particle creation like uh, neutron creation or proton destruction, then you need the quantization of uh, the Dirac uh, field also. Yeah. Now I am not really doing quantum uh, field theory. I am introducing some basic notions so that the language of quantum field theory I can use like particle creation, particle destruction, even to write Fermi's theory, the Fermi's interaction uh, for weak interaction. I, I need uh, these concepts of particle creation and particle destruction. Okay. So, shall we start now? Sir, I had a question from previous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And you wrote J plus as like T bar N. Yeah. Plus new E. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. The multiplication part I understood, but why the addition? Like why? Why? Adding, right? Adding what? Oh, you mean J plus J minus plus J minus J plus I added. No, 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 not that one. Yeah. At the same you are writing like, okay, what neutron is coming? Yeah. Uh, from that one, uh, uh, proton, is, uh, proton, is, uh, proton is the output and neutron is the input. Yeah, correct, correct. Then I, I think then I am adding, uh, 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 what is it I am adding, uh, an electron is destroyed and a neutrino is created, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like oh. that, uh, what is the logic behind this? Uh, See, unless you add all these terms, see, remember in beta decay of the neutron, neutron is destroyed, proton is created. And at the same time, an electron and the anti neutrino also are created. How are we going to get that? Unless I add, since I have added them, and then uh, I am going to multiply uh, the Hermitian conjugate of this J plus and J minus. So I pick up, I mean, I gave the example, I, I will give you that example again. J plus is equal to uh, <coughs> P bar N plus mu E bar E plus similarly for mu and J minus is N bar P plus E bar nu E plus and J plus J minus contains P bar N E bar nu E I take one from this, one from this. So this is uh, really the interaction. You remember I even wrote it uh, pictorially. Uh, <coughs> pictorially I take P bar N from here and E bar nu E and then another uh, neutron beta decay comes. Namely, Okay. In order to get this part, I have to add. Understood? Yes, sir. No, I understood. Like ultimately, in all of them are getting multiplied. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you look at all of them, all the weak interaction process, not only beta decay, mu decay, and the mu absorption. I think I gave all the examples, all the three examples last time. And still, yes, you can see that uh, if you have um, uh, 
uh, n terms in j plus j minus also is n term n terms. So, it describes n squared number of weak interaction process and uh, I, I forgot to mention one thing you already know that uh, a field operator for uh, fermion <coughs> de de uh, destroys a particle and creates an antiparticle. So, because of that the number of processes are enormous ok. In fact, it will be a good exercise to for you to enumerate all these process and uh, <coughs> understand this process. They are all the weak interactions. Okay. Actually, I basically had come up to this and then I also made some remarks about neutrinos which of course, will be taken up later in a more detailed uh, discussion of neutrinos later. So, up to this point, we have constructed the electroweak theory, weak interaction theory up to 1972, we have come to 1972. I said 1972 is the watershed when standard model was getting built up, especially the electroweak part. So, I am going to discuss that. The standard model itself I am going to discuss in more detail after this, but now that part which is relevant for this weak interaction I am going to do. Electroweak theory. So, this is what is called electroweak theory because in this form electromagnetism and weak interactions get amalgamated into one unified theory. I already mentioned it in my very first lecture that is a part of the standard model. So, this is weak interaction after 1972. Let us go back to the Fermi's analogy which Fermi used to construct this theory. First the electromagnetism, electron, electron. <coughs> no, I want to write it in a different way now. Oh, Nikima. Proton and electron interact via exchange of photon. That is one typical uh, diagram which gives you the Coulomb force and uh, this is electromagnetism. And Fermi's theory, he, he based it on the analogy to this. So, here neutron, proton and the leptonic lines, the electron and the neutrino. This is Fermi, Fermi theory. But clearly, although Fermi uh, uh, based himself on an analogy with uh, ultramagnetism, you can see that the analogy is not quite perfect. Analogy will become more uh, closer if I uh, separate this hadronic line and the leptonic line and allow a quantum to be exchanged exactly like the uh, photon case here. I am sorry, the electron. Okay. So, from Fermi's theory, we go to W exchange theory. This also I have discussed even in my very first lecture. I allow a W quantum, a weak quantum. Remember, charge is conserved at every vertex. So, neutron going to proton, charge will be conserved only if it is a negatively charged W minus, which is emitted which gives you an electron and a neutrino, they are also charges concerned. So, this is W exchange here. What are this, uh, <coughs> what is this W? The properties of W. One, I already mentioned W has to be charged in contrast to photon which is uncharged. Second, 
W must have spin j equal to 1 exactly like photon because electromagnetic current is a vector current and Fermi chose in an analogy to that a weak current. I said although I wrote uh, uh, <coughs> things like uh, P bar n, I said that you have to sandwich these Dirac factors gamma mu, gamma mu and even in the in the parity violating case gamma mu into 1 minus gamma phi we have to sandwich and that is a vector, vector uh, actual vector both of them correspond to spin 1 and they will couple only to spin 1 particle. So, W must have spin 1 exactly like photon, remember photon is spin 1. Third, in contrast to photon W must have mass. Because remember from the time of Yukawa we know that if a particle has zero mass like photon, the range of the interaction is infinite, electromagnetic interaction, Coulomb interaction is infinite, there is no cutoff. Whereas weak interaction we know is short range, it is uh, even shorter than uh, <coughs> strong interaction less than 10 power minus 14 centimeter, now we know exactly uh, uh, <coughs> its range and uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, since there is this inverse relationship between the range of the force and the mass of the particle which is exchanged in order to generate that force because of that if uh, <coughs> okay. I do not know they have to stop this I do not know how to tell Gayatri I will tell Gayatri. So <coughs> uh, and, and so the W has to be massive. Now uh, the coupling constants here are this is E, this is E and this is the famous Fermi coupling constant GF. Now GF is to be replaced by something else. This is called the semi weak coupling constant small g at both vertices that is the that is going to be the basic weak interaction coupling. And so in order to agree with uh, uh, Fermi's original GF, uh, see this is called the contact interaction and this is a. <coughs> Uh, the contact interaction has been separated into two parts. Okay, so GF has to be replaced by. If you work out all the first of all, uh, G squared has to come. Second, the propagator, the, pro, the amplitude for propagation of W from this point to this point, and that is called the propagator. Uh, propagator. Actually, we are interested only in very low energies at the moment. So low momentum transfers and low energies. There the propagator is basically the mass, mass squared, mw squared. There are some numbers like root 2. I have not been careful about these numbers so far. So there is this important connection between Fermi's coupling constant and the coupling constant with the w boson which we have introduced. So let us now see what we have done. We have replaced the current into current interaction. J plus J minus by this, so that J plus J minus plus J minus plus. by the semi weak coupling constant small g the current j plus and w plus j plus is the uh, remember is the charge increasing current that is what is called j plus if it is charge increasing to conserve charge this should be <coughs> emission of a w minus so the, although i write it as w plus it is emission of w minus and destruction operator, I mean it will contain uh, emission operator for, uh, I mean creation operator for W minus and uh, destruction or annihilation operator for the antiparticle of W minus which is W plus. So that is the notation. If I write W plus, it is really <coughs> the destruction operator for W plus and it will also contain creation operator for its antiparticle W minus plus its emission conjugate namely J minus W minus. That is what we have done. Or pictorially, I have been using this pictorial language.
when going to P, E, E destroy again equivalent to charge increasing, need to know mu E is equal, of course there are other terms, mu, mu. I think I already mentioned last time what is the difference between mu E and mu nu. Mu E is associated with the electron, whenever electron comes or electron initiated process there will be a nu or anti nu. Whenever it is a mu uh, in the final state or in the initial state corresponding particle will be nu mu. So this into, so this is the <coughs> J plus and I denote the W plus creation of W minus like this. So that is my picture plus the other part. Here the proton is destroyed, so it is charge decreasing. And so <coughs> neutrino and E minus is created, mu nu and mu minus and so on. And uh, this should be W plus. This corresponds to this term, W plus emission and W minus emission. Now we can see it is uh, uh, this part is uh, similar to the electromagnetic thing which is E, E means uh, the electric charge you know, as a number not the electron operator, the electric charge into the electromagnetic current which I have been denoting I think as J E M into the electromagnetic uh, vector potential which is the creation or destruction operator for photon. Since photon and antiphoton are the same. A itself contains creation operator and destruction operator for photon. So this part is similar to this, a current into oh, a vector field. <coughs> so this is similar to, so this is weak dynamics, you can say, similar to electrodynamics which is P goes to P plus E going to E plus mu going to mu emission or absorption of a photon. So this is electric electric electrodynamics. Now you can see the similarity, the symmetry between weak <coughs> uh, interaction and uh, and uh, electromagnetic interactions is even closer. But the main point now we have to make is this I cannot explain in detail, we will do it when we construct a full standard model, this theory of uh, the interactions. Uh, this symmetry, but the above symmetry is not deep enough, is only apparent is not deep enough. Why I say that, remember in electrodynamics, uh, <coughs> electrodynamics, electromagnetism is based on the idea of conservation of electric charge. And conservation of electric charge is closely related to another concept namely the gauge invariance of electrodynamics, gauge invariance. How it is connected, uh, I think I will explain <coughs> when I come to uh, a yeah, fuller discussion of gauge theories. So this is very important and we have simply, uh, simply put this uh, <coughs> thing without bothering about this. So. <coughs> certain important structural modifications to the whole theory is needed before we can achieve uh, a similar thing for the weak dynamics. So this is not the complete thing, we have to have uh, uh, <coughs> age invariance uh, and conservation of electric charge. And uh, remember the weak interaction, uh, this again I am uh, talking about something which we will discuss later, Yang-Mills 
it, it involves Young Mills theory. In addition to the single electrical charge which comes in electrodynamics, there are three other charges, four charges, four non-abelian charges. All these I had mentioned in my very first lecture, non-abelian charges, namely they are not numbers like electric charges, but matrices. They do not commute with each other. So, they are called non-abelian and so this theory is called the non-abelian gauge theory, the theory which Yang and Mills constructed non-abelian charges, you may say generalized charges. All this I am going to discuss again, but uh, I am briefly referring to it uh, to complete the weak interaction story. So, it is this way that electromagnetism and weak interaction are unified through a yang mills field theory of four non-abelian charges are unified. And the, an important consequence which I want to discuss now is that a new kind of weak interaction, a new kind of weak interaction is generated, it, it, uh, has to be uh, included for this theory to work. That is called the neutral current weak interaction. So, I am going to discuss that a little bit now. Remember, these are uh, charge raising or charge lowering are simply called charge recurrence and in contrast, the electromagnetism itself it does not in, uh, change the charge. So, it is in some sense a neutral current. A similar neutral current in the weak interaction sector exists and it was discovered after the development of uh, the electroweak theory. So, let me now uh, write down uh, that, that theory, that is the electroweak theory. I do not know this uh, noise. Madam, the noise is going to be in the so, what is this electrobic theory? Here, of course, we have the electromagnetic interaction, the old electromagnetic interaction. That does not get modified. Plus, this is W boson theory. Plus, one more term which we have to add coupling constant for neutral current interaction. So, I will call it Gn and the neutral current Jn interacting with a neutral gauge boson. So, there are four gauge bosons, 1, 2, 3, 4, interacting with the four generalized charges. That is the generalization of electromagnetism we have got. Now, what does this uh, denote? Pictorially, let me again write down. It will be here the uh, charge does not uh, charge is the same. So, proton remains proton and uh, so neutron will remain as neutron and the electron will remain as electron and neutrino will remain as neutrino. So, charge does not change and the emission vertex is uh, <coughs> this. The Z boson or Z boson is either emitted or Z boson itself um, is self conjugate, uh, unlike W plus W minus, where antiparticles are different because they are charged. In that sense, it is like the electromagnetic field, it contains creation as well as destruction operator for the Z boson. This also is a massive boson, otherwise, weak interaction will be long range. We have to avoid that. <coughs> 
So, what is the main thing in this? A uh, photon becomes a member of a four of the family of four gauge bosons. Thanks, Anna. And one important concern, this again I had mentioned uh, in my very first lecture, is that in contrast to the photon which does not have self coupling, these uh, non abelian, so called non abelian gauge bosons, namely W plus W minus and is that have self couplings, both a cubic vertex as well as a quartic vertex. So, this may be the <coughs> Uh, w plus W minus Z, this may be W plus W minus W plus W minus or W plus W minus and Z and Z and so on. Self interactions. In, this is a special feature of Young Mills theory, which is not present in Maxwell's electrodynamics. So, we have completed a full uh, circle. We started with Fermi who used the analogy with the electromagnetism and then we end up by incorporating uh, electromagnetism and weak interactions into the same electroweak theory. That is the conception of the electroweak theory whose full uh, uh, details we will come to later. <coughs> Neutral current, some important thing points about neutral current. Neutral current acts as a bridge between electromagnetism and weak and the original weak interactions. It is neutral like uh, Electromagnetic current, electromagnetic current also is neutral because it does not change the charge. <coughs> but but mediated by a massive mediator like like the original weak interaction, like the charged current weak interaction. So neutral current weak interaction is in some sense. Uh, <coughs> neutral current weak interaction is a bridge between these two. It shares some features of this and some features of this. And this neutral current weak interaction was discovered experimentally after the development of this electroweak theory by uh, Glashow, Salam, and Weinberg, which was uh, the theoretical development was completed by the year 1967 when uh, Weinberg wrote the famous paper, but experimentalists discovered this, weak this new form of weak interaction in 1972. How did they discover it? They discovered it in neutrino collisions uh, <coughs> on nuclei and uh, there were processes in which maybe a proton or a neutron here. But the important thing is neutrino does not become a charged particle like, uh, like electron or mu, it remains as a neutrino. So, this is a neutral current process. So, obviously, it is mediated by G. Uh, <coughs> NC was discovered at CERN uh, in, uh, in the year 1972 by uh, what is his name? Perkins and others. This was an important discovery, but unfortunately, uh, <coughs> this uh, Nobel Prize was not given for this. It's again a mistake of <laughs> the Nobel Committee, I would say. Uh, <coughs> uh, how did they discover it? I mean, for this, uh, actually, they had to construct a huge bubble chamber, uh, <coughs> yeah, so huge that um, they could, uh, dis if there was a pro um, Pion and muon, they can distinguish. 
muon uh, 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 is a penetrating particle, so it goes for very long time, but pi n will get soon absorbed. Uh, so, in order to distinguish it, the your detector has to be beginner. So, they finally built the so called Gargamel bubble chamber, and it was the Gargamel bubble chamber which they used to show that when neutrinos collided with the with their nuclei, uh, they did not find a mu or electron. And hence, it was neutrino only in the final state, so they could not detect it. And that was the discovery of the neutral current. So, this was the first uh, confirmation of electrovic theory. Gargamel bubble chamber. You can look at Perkins' book on particle physics, I have already referred to Gargamel bubble chamber. So, for such experimental fact, maybe Perkins' book is better than theory, theoretician's book. First experimental confirmation of the electrovic theory. Okay. So, I will say one thing more about neutral current. In the history of weak interactions, you remember the discovery of beam and SA was an important milestone after parity evolution was discovered. But V minus A is only for charged current. V minus A interaction is only for charged current weak interaction, the original weak interaction. Neutral current interaction is not uh, V minus A. It has both V and A, but not in the form V minus A with equal strength, not V minus A some combination of B and A, what combination it is, it is specified by sin theta W, I mean a new parameter which comes in the electrovic theory uh, relative to uh, <coughs> proportion of V and A specified by an important parameter which comes in the electrovic theory. How it comes again we will discuss later called sin theta w, weak, in, weak angle. Weinberg introduced it, so some people might think that it is Weinberg angle, but it is called weak angle. Experiment. So, once uh, the weak interaction was uh, <coughs> discovered, its properties were studied how much of V and how much of A, from that sin theta w was determined experimentally. And theta W turns out to be 0.23. This number is very well, in fact, many decimal places now it is known. Now, uh, let me ne next uh, <coughs> talk about this important uh, thing. Experimental discovery. of W and Z. Now, the uh, <coughs> electrovic theory also specifies the connection between G is given in terms of E and, and sin theta W. Similarly, G n also is given. So, those relations are E equal to G sin theta W and uh, G n equal to G divided by cos theta W. Not only that, one more important relation, M W gets related to M Z through the same angle, M Z into cos theta W. These follow from the theory, which uh, of course I will <coughs> derive them later, but right now I am going to use this. Because you remember I already have the, this relation, this relation becomes G F is equal to root 2 e square by using this relation 
over 8 sin square theta w m w square. So, now everything in this is known. So, we can calculate uh, g f is known experimentally, e squared is a prime structure constant, sin, sin theta w is known and so m w can be calculated and hence m z also can be calculated. So, from this uh, you can get uh, <coughs> m w is equal to a precise number is known, I will write only approximate number and m z is equal to 91. Remember the uh, proton or neutron are about 1 GeV, 0.94 GeV. So, it is 100 times the proton mass. So, special uh, high energy accelerators had to be constructed in order to produce them and uh, CERN, in CERN uh, such accelerators were built and uh, W and Z with these masses were uh, <coughs> discovered in CERN. That is the experimental discovery of M, uh, W and Z, uh, 19, 1984. Remember, neutral current itself was 72, but this <coughs> required a conception of this huge accelerator, uh, which can generate. Actually, uh, it is a very interesting story. In fact, I think on the first day I mentioned all the Nobel Prize winner, Rubia and uh, uh, <coughs> Rubia and uh, Van der Meer got the prize, Nobel Prize uh, for the discovery of this and Van der Meer was an engineer, it's an, he was an accelerator engineer uh, and he got the prize because uh, it was a proton, anti-proton machine, proton any number you can produce by ionizing hydrogen that is proton, but anti-proton have to be produced in high energy collisions and you have to produce, you have to accumulate enough number of them before reasonable number of anti-proton, proton collisions can be used in the experiment and that uh, was achievement of uh, uh, <coughs> Van der Meer. He, uh, I mean it is a very, very important acceleration technique, how we can go on accumulating anti-proton and uh, it is called the anti-proton accumulator and because of that only he was, although he was not a physicist, he was given the physics prize. Okay. And uh, uh, exactly at this masses they were uh, discussed, so it was a great triumph of electricity. <coughs> I want to make one more remark about this equation. You look at this, remember GF is very small, 10 power minus uh, 5 uh, measured in units of MP squared. In fact, very easy to connect MP and MW, I have already told you is about 100 times large, putting those things in 10 power minus 5, that is why MW comes out to be very large, because <coughs> this is uh, very small. Now, why is this small? You can see it is small because of the largeness of MW. So, weak interaction is nothing weak. In fact, this relation tells you that uh, weak interaction is even a little stronger than electromagnetic interaction because this is always smaller than 1. And um, uh, <coughs> we are measuring uh, the strength of the weak interaction by low energy process like mu decay and neutron decay uh, described by GF and that is why it looks weak. But once you go to very high energies when W and Z are produced, weak interaction gains its full strength. So, uh, the reason why weak interaction is weak also is explained by this. Before completing this uh, part of the story, I have to mention the other important thing. spontaneous breakdown of symmetry and Higgs mechanism. This again I will be brief and I will uh, come back to this because these are very important 
part of uh, high energy physics presently. So I will uh, discuss these things again. After finishing this weak interaction theory, I am going to take up the building of the standard model step by step. So all these things will come there fully. So <coughs> I already mentioned this again, let me repeat, gauge invariance of electromagnetism leads to massless photon. This again, you can, if you put a mass term into the uh, Maxwell's equations, you can see that gauge invariance goes out. I will explicitly illustrate it later. Similarly, the non-abelian gauge invariant or Yang-Mills gauge invariant of Yang-Mills leads to massless But this will make uh, weak interaction long range and so we cannot have it. So <clears throat> although photon we would like to keep massless, mass of W and Z have to be lifted to very high values, first of all lifted from 0 and then uh, with those values. That is what uh, <clears throat> the spontaneous breakdown of symmetry achieves, especially the form which Higgs did it, it is called Higgs mechanism. give you massive W and Z, which is absolutely necessary to describe weak interactions. But that Higgs mechanism also <coughs> uh, predicts that there has to be a particle called Higgs boson, with finite mass, but uh, spin 0, so it is a scalar particle for the first time an elementary scalar particle comes, if Higgs mechanism is correct, there has to be Higgs boson and that was searched in all accelerators that went on building uh, accelerators of higher and higher energy. All parts of standard model, whole standard model including even QCD was verified, but this Higgs boson could not be experimentally detected. It is like building a huge machine, but an important bolt is missing. And finally, only in 19, I am sorry, 2012. Discovered at CERN at LHC, uh, <coughs> mass of the Higgs boson is 125 GeV. See, unlike the W and Z masses which are predicted by electrophoric theory, but Higgs mechanism does not predict the mass of the particle. That is why it was hard to detect it, but finally they managed to detect it. and. Uh, <coughs> So, in, uh, I would say in 2012, electroweak theory is completed and established to be a correct theory. So, only 80 years ago it was completed, this completed the electroweak theory. I have to make uh, one more uh, important <coughs> thing which I will not discuss at all in detail. I already mentioned when I gave you a little bit of background of uh, quantum field theory that all quantum field theories suffer from infinities. As soon as you calculate a higher order process like self energy or a vertex uh, correction, you remember that loop diagram involves integrating over uh, uh, the virtual photon momentum up to infinite energies and uh, that is not a convergent integral. All such integrals are divergent. So, quantum electrodynamics is divergent, but the because of the important uh, <coughs> Uh, procedure called renormalization discovered by uh, Feynman, uh, Tomonaga, Schwinger and uh, Dyson in the 1948-49 period, uh, re the renormalizability of quantum electrodynamics was discovered and proved. Same thing happened for uh, uh, the electroweak theory. So the renormalizability of electroweak theory Otherwise, electrophoric theory or standard model will be meaningless. We will not be able to calculate anything precisely. Only the lowest order can be calculated. Fermi's theory is not renormalizable. That was one of the defects of Fermi's theory. Why some theories are renormalizable and some are not? You have to know a little bit of quantum field theory. Uh, I do not think I will go that far. Uh, 
it's not very easy to uh, it is not very easy to understand it but i i don't have time to talk about it so renormalizability of electrovector that is the next point exactly like qed quantum electrodynamics electrovector also is renormalizable this was the discovery of to uh, hooked gerard to hooked and martin sweltman who was his phd advisor and so since it's renormalizable higher order calculations can be done exactly as in qed qed remember i already told you is one of the most precisely uh, uh, precise theories you can calculate things even up to 10 figures of accuracy and the experimentalists can determine that up to 10 figures of accuracy they will be able to verify it same uh, property now holds for the whole electrovic theory and uh, <coughs> thanks to to turn weltman and so so the precise calculations were done and the experimental test precise test precision test because of that the precision test could be done especially uh, uh, at another machine at CERN called LEP, Large Electron Positron Collider. This is a circular ring, huge ring, uh, which was converted, which, which was dismantled and then it was converted into the proton-proton machine. That is a large hadron collider, which was later used for the discovery of the Higgs. But originally, it was an electron positron collider with energies uh, even going up to 200 GeV. And uh, in fact, uh, if they if they have the center mass energy e plus e minus colliding exactly at 91 GeV, then a huge resonance corresponding to the Z boson. So uh, I think millions of Z bosons were uh, seen, and they could do all the uh, pro, uh, determine all the properties of the Z boson uh, precisely, and uh, checked with the standard model, and I mean with the electric part uh, of the standard model, and it agreed with fantastic precision. Almost like uh, the old story of QED. So this also became an exact theory. And uh, <coughs> Tewton Weltman proved the renormalizability in 1972. And the precision tests were done at uh, <coughs> LEP uh, in the 90s. And the electric theory passed all these tests. And uh, after that precision tests were done, then only Tewton Weltman got the prize, uh, <coughs> Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prize. But much later than 1972, only after this experimental test. Otherwise, it was purely a theoretical work. Uh, <coughs> although everybody knew that uh, that deserves a Nobel Prize, but Nobel Committee sometimes uh, uses an experimental criterion in order to decide whether that thing deserves a Nobel Prize. So in this case, that's what happened. Okay. So I will pause a little because uh, maybe I will finish this part. So it's still about 10 minutes, so let me do that. The next step uh, I want to take is, remember uh, here I was using proton and neutron. We should not use proton and neutron because they are like composite particles. We have to go to quarks. So let me do that. That is just rewriting everything in terms of quarks. Recognizing that proton and neutron themselves are made of three quarks. It is very easy to do it. I call it the transition to the core theorem. All these things are discussed. I am just uh, using my review, an elementary review which I published in Resonance. It is also in archive. I gave the archival reference. So please look at that. So uh, as we already know, neutron is made up of three quarks.
proton also is made up of three quarks. Let us call this uh, DDU. D U D and here D U U that is proton and that is neutron. So, in the uh, neutron beta decay what happens is it is one of the D quarks in the neutron uh, becomes a U quark by emitting a W. W minus 1, right? Yeah, because U has higher charge than D. D has charge minus 1 third. Remember all that which we discussed in the beginning. The D quark has charge minus 1 third. U quark has got charge plus 2 third. So, this is W minus, then I can put the arrow and that will create an electron. So, that is the beta decay in terms of quark language which we already know. So, <coughs> now let me write down all the quarks which I think I have already said that better to write them in terms of this doublet C f and T u T b. Similarly, for the leptons mu, <coughs> I will call them nu 1 for some reason I, I do not use the word nu nu e nu 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 tau, but I will use nu 1. Uh, the reason for that will come to you later. And mu 2. And this is just a change of notation. This is not the notation which people use. The notation which is commonly used is very illogical notation. I try to make it a little bit more logical. So, the Lagrangian density for electroweak interaction now in terms of these quarks will be written like this. Same thing as before. E, J, E, M. J e is simply the electromagnetism, J e into photon field plus <coughs> the charged current interaction J plus W plus plus J minus W minus plus the neutral current interaction J n, J n, G n, J n into Z, okay. Remember J e and J n are neutral currents, so they will involve uh, <coughs> the, the fermionic fields in the combination u bar u, d bar d, uh, e bar e, etcetera. So, you can precisely write. Here I have to put a gamma mu in between and here some combination of gamma mu into some constant a. Uh, plus some constant times of gamma phi because it has both b and a, but specified by sin theta w. Uh, that coefficient a and b can be written in terms of sin theta w. All that is known. Just I am not writing it. Whereas j plus, let me write down more explicitly, j plus is equal to u bar d uh, charge increasing c bar s plus t bar b then the leptonic terms mu 1 bar E, mu 2 bar uh, mu, mu 3 bar tau, that is all. And J minus uh, are the complex conjugates, are the Hermitian conjugates of this, D bar U and so on. You can take them down. Or pictorially, J plus is D u s c and uh, b top and uh, new e j plus so electronics the start new one new new two tau mu 3 and j minus you can write down you can draw analogous figures 
you destroyed and you created and so on. Okay. So, that is all the transcription, but something is missing here that requires a little bit more time to <coughs> explain. Um, so, I will uh, do that uh, after the break. So, now we will have a break of about half an hour, but um, you can ask questions on whatever I did so far. So, I will come back to these expressions and then modify them suitably in order to agree with the experiment. Yeah, we will start at 11 30. But meanwhile, if you have questions, you can ask me now. Okay, no questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, if you are not asking me, uh, asking me now, you can ask me later also. I will come back maybe after 15 minutes. So, you can think of questions to ask me during those 15 minutes. So, I will come back here by 11.15 or so. Okay. So, 11.15 call.
கேன்டீன் திறந்துருக்காப்பா யூடியூப் கொஞ்சம் நேரம் ஹாஃப் அன் அவர் பிரேக் பண்ணி இப்போ மறுபடியும் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணிடுங்க சரி 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 ஓகே யா Yeah, now it is 10, I'm going to be 10. Is there any question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, there a, was there an experimental need for uh, looking for neutral current or was it uh, kind of a theoretical? Uh, no, uh, the electrobic theory definitely has neutral current. And so experimentalists uh, began to look seriously. But there is an interesting story there. Actually, the neutral currents uh, were there in experiment. But the experimenters did not look at them carefully. and threw, threw away the events. You know the reason? Because the theorists had told them that there is, there, this was before electrobic theory. People like even uh, T.D. Lee, the famous physicist, uh, had uh, told uh, the Brookhaven scientists that there cannot be any neutral current. Because if there is a neutral current, hello, uh, there is some echo or something. I don't know what is it. Hello? Yeah, if there is a neutral current, there will be some process which is not seen. in KDK, I do not want to explain it now, the so called um, strangeness changing neutral current. But there is uh, forgot that there can, uh, there can be strangeness non changing neutral current, the neutral current does not change anything, not only charge, even strangeness it will not change. But they thought that neutral current will uh, change uh, uh, strangeness in KDK and such decays were not observed. So, I told the, they told the experimenters not to Uh, not to look at them and they threw away uh, <coughs> the event before examining, so they were there. Um, so finally, only after the success of the, um, after the successful construction of the electrobic theory, successful in the sense that uh, Tooth and Beltman showed it is even renormalizable. So the theories began to take uh, uh, the Weinberg, uh, Salam, uh, Glashow theory seriously, then the experimentalists. Uh, you know especially perkin uh, perkins and company uh, they constructed a huge gargamel bubble chamber uh, and uh, took it to cern and began to look for it seriously and because of the huge size as i explained they could see that there was no muon in the final state uh, <coughs> and uh, hence it was a neutral current that is how the discovery came i mean this is uh, there is a moral here the moral is that experimentalists should not listen to theories too much. Experimentalists should, in fact, in my opinion, should ignore theories and go and do good experiments, build best equipment and, uh, and observe everything which can be observed. That is the way new physics can come. If they go on following theories, they may be misguided and they may miss many things. Yeah. And you know, this um, neutral current is almost as strong as the charged current and it uh, remained undetected for the 70 years because weak interaction study is from the beginning of the uh, 20th century and only the charged current form namely the beta decay etc had been seen uh, and uh, even when the par many particles came uh, 
they should have really looked seriously. It was, a, in, in my opinion, it was a mistake of the experimentalists. Uh, and so, something which was as big as the charged current weak interaction, which was studied for 70 years, uh, neutral currents uh, remained uh, hidden until prompted by again a theory, namely electroweak theory. They should have learned it independently. They would have really uh, determined all the properties of neutral current even before uh, the electroweak theory got built up. But uh, history did not go that way. So, shall we uh, proceed or is there any other question? I can wait for five more minutes for people to ask questions. I wanted to mention one thing which uh, I forgot. Uh, <clears throat> you look at that equation G Fermi is equal to root 2, root 2 G squared becomes uh, V squared by sin squared. I think there was a 8 sin squared theta w. Please check whether this is correct. This is the important equation which helped them to determine mw and mz. And mz is uh, mw divided by cos theta w and sin theta w is 0.23. All the numbers are here. And remember, GF I had told you is 10 power minus 5 divided by MP square. So, 10 power minus 5 divided by MP square is equal to this. So, that is how, uh, and uh, this is E square is 1 over 137. And this is given. So, MW from this equation, MW gets determined to be A to GV. It is a very simple calculation. Please verify this yourself. The numbers you should know. After all, physics is finally about numbers. MZ is MW divided by cos theta W, so that is 920. I forgot to mention this. Because the uh, MP square comes here, MW square comes, so that both sides balance mass wise. So MW comes, uh, <coughs> uh, MW bring it to this side, so 10 power 5 will come as 10 power 5. So, square root of 10 power 5 comes apart from other number 1 over 137 and so on. That is why uh, MW is of the R, uh, uh, about 100 times larger than MP because of this or rather inverse of that. Okay. Yeah. Higgs boson has to exist according to theory, but the theory has some other parameter uh, in, the, uh, in the Higgs mechanism theory. Uh, and so, the, since that parameter was not known, they could not ex uh, determine the actual number, that is all. But uh, I read somewhere that there is also a possibility that some higher mass Higgs boson also. No, 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 no. Uh, what happened was, uh, what happens is, you see standard model is not the final story. So, there are many modifications people have been trying, but nothing has worked. Standard model, the, the original uh, standard model remains robust without any change. You can always um, tweak the standard model, I mean make modifications, especially supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is one thing which many, many theorists believe in it. And so, if in supersymmetry, there will be more Higgs bosons. Similarly, any extension of uh, standard model will always, always involve uh, more Higgs bosons. And experimentally, of course, no other Higgs boson except 125 GeV Higgs boson has been seen. Although there were uh, some suggestions of other particles, they all uh, disappeared with the further experiments. As of now, no signal beyond the standard model with one Higgs boson and W plus W minus and Z has been seen. Standard model remains a very successful, robust theory. Unfortunately, uh, it is not easy to break it. There is only one thing which breaks it, that is the neutrino mass. I am going to discuss that. That is the importance of neutrino experiments. Neutrino mass is the only window which tells you uh, how to go beyond standard model. 
but for that we have to do a little bit more work. We will, so, part of it I, I will be able to describe in this lectures. Yeah. Shall we start? Shall I start? Yeah. Actually, what I have written here uh, requires a modification. J plus and J minus do not involve these, but some linear combinations of these quark fields. How it comes, in fact, uh, you have to go to uh, actual standard model construction, which I am going to take up next after finishing this, after uh, today's lecture, even today's lecture towards the end, I think I will start uh, building up the standard model. And there you will see why that uh, complication comes in theory. But for the moment, let me simply introduce that complication. So, there is actually some linear combinations, linear superpositions. This is called quark mixing. and uh, lepton mix and neutrino mixing. In J plus and J minus, I have been writing above or below, I do not remember, both mean the same for me. Uh, linear superpositions of quark fields actually occur, not the way I have written. So, I will introduce this superposition in the following way. Q i, Q means quark field, uh, either, um, uh, yeah. Q1, Q2, Q3, let me call uh, D, yes, B, let me denote by Q1, Q2, Q3, call them this way. Then QI is replaced by QI prime, which are linear superpositions, these are coefficients, IJ, QJ, repeated indices again summed over. It is these which have to come there. Wherever uh, D, S, B comes, it is this, if you like, D prime, S prime, uh, <coughs> B prime have to. Sir, could you please make the form system bigger? Yeah. The linear superpositions are simply this, with constant coefficients, U, I, J. Q j, j summed over, repeat indices summed over. Uh, <coughs> the my notation is q1, q2, q3 are nothing but uh, the lower components of those uh, quark fields d, yes, d. Either you can do it for the upper components or the lower components. One of them is enough because only the product comes, so only one of them is enough at this stage, okay. And these U's, you know, if, uh, if we think of them as wave functions, if the quark fields are original, quark wave functions are originally orthogonal, these also have to be orthogonal. So, these are orthogonal superpositions of this, orthonormal superposition. So, U has to be unitary matrix, U dagger U equal to 1, unitary matrix, unitary 3 by 3 matrix. So, that plays an essential role in all weak interaction physics. It is called the CKM matrix in honor of Kabibo, who first introduced the notion of quark mixing. Kabibo, uh, Kobayashi, on Maskawa.
And this matrix, since it's a unitary matrix, you can show well, how many independent parameters. There will be three angles. Remember, for an orthogonal matrix, there are three angles, the three Eulerian angles <coughs> needed to describe any arbitrary rotation, three angles, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. But then this is unitary because these are all complex quantities. This quantum mechanics, we are discussing complex quantities. And so in general, <coughs> there can be phases. And um, but many of the phases, since they come in particular uh, combinations like the U bar D and so on, many of the phases can be redefined, I mean, can be removed by redefining the fields. Because fields themselves are not seen, right? When you calculate something, the probability amplitude, <coughs> certain combinations of the fields only will enter. And in those combinations, uh, most of the phases uh, go away. And uh, for a 3 by 3 matrix, there is only one phase. And this phase is very important because remember, these u's come here and then we are putting it into the Lagrangian. So basically, in some sense, the coupling constant becomes complex. If the coupling constant becomes complex, that is a sign of violation of CP. Go back to the earlier lecture where I talked about CP violation discovered by Cronin and Fitch, and that is very important to explain the present asymmetry of the universe between matter and antimatter. Only matter exists, antimatter has gone away. How did it happen? One of the conditions necessary is CP violation. So this phase leads to CP violation, which is written like this, because it essentially makes the coupling uh, complex. Only one phase. If it is only 2 by 2, <coughs> there are, uh, all the phases can be removed. 4 by 4, there will be more. So it was Kobayashi and Maskawa who showed that there have to be at least three generations of quarks in order to have at least one phase remaining, which is necessary to CP violation. This is an important paper. The paper, if you look at it, it contains all kinds of junk, but there is one paragraph which shows that if it is a 3 by 3 matrix, there is one phase which is necessary for CP violation. And because of this, they got Nobel Prize. Uh, very recently only, I think 2000, when was it? Very recent, 2010 or even later. Kabibo was left out because without Kabibo there is no, no CK matrix, no nothing like this. And this is another mistake of the Nobel Prize Committee. I can enumerate many mistakes during these 100 years, uh, 120 years of Nobel Prize, uh, so many mistakes, at least in physics, I can point out easily what are the mistakes. But this is one of the mistakes. But anyway, this is called the CKM matrix. It is called CKM matrix, characterized by three angles and one phase, all important phase, CP violating phase. Now, Similar thing come, uh, happens in the leptonic sector also. So let us uh, define. Here I am taking the upper component in order to form this. So these numbers, let, let me call them V, I, J now. Again, a 3 by 3 matrix. This uh, matrix also goes by certain names. This is C, K, M, Kabibo, Kobayashi, Maskawa. This is P, M, N, S. Pomeranchuk, not Pomeranchuk. Uh, I have written Pomeranchuk, but it's, not. it's another Russian, but what is his name? Pontekarov. Pontekarov, correct. Pontekarov. Minakata. Pontekarov is not Russian, apparently, he's an Italian. Ponte Caro, Minakata, uh, Makagawa, and Sakita, the famous Sakita who introduced the CU3 first Sakita, same Sakita. So here also there is uh, Italian and uh, Japanese, here, here also Italian and the Japanese. So this is called the PMNS matrix. <coughs> and, um, Now, 
One of the uh, importance uh, I have already mentioned, CP evaluation comes through this. The other thing is, see, once you introduce this mixing, uh, you can see that in terms of the actual quarks, DSB, uh, <coughs> now originally in the weak interaction sector, uh, D can go to U only, U can go to D. There is no intergenerational mixing, but this introduces intergenerational mixing. So because of that, the S core can decay into this, B core can decay into uh, uh, S, C and U, D. That is why all the heavy corks decay. And that is why the present day universe is made up of only the lightest quarks, U, D and the lightest lepton electron. Otherwise, the universe would have been much more complicated. Uh, all these quarks and all these leptons would have come. The present day universe is made up of only U, D and E and neutrinos of course. It's because of this mixing, so it plays a very important role. One more thing in the neutrino sector, it is this mixing which leads to the so called neutrino oscillation and help the experimentalists to show that neutrinos have mass. So that is the importance of the mixing matrix in the neutrino sector. Uh, I will say a little bit more about this now perhaps, uh, neutrino, uh, neutrino mass, yeah, uh, let me say this now. This also only a uh, little bit and uh, we will have to say more once I begin to construct the standard model. So let me do this now, discovery of neutrino mass. How did that happen? This is an important uh, story in uh, particle physics, important event in particle physics. So, <coughs> it's a part of weak interaction physics, discovery of neutrino mass. About neutrinos, uh, the uh, complete story about neutrinos, I have written uh, again an article. It was published in some place, it is perhaps difficult to uh, access, but it is there in RK fortunately. 1606.08715. Physics. popular articles, okay, that is the reference. Uh, <coughs> I think it is called uh, the story of neutrinos, the story of the neutrinos. By myself. So, you can look at it. A very, uh, uh, it is written in a very elementary way. I am going to summarize that here now. Uh, let me again start with Fermi. Fermi, even in 1934 in his original paper, 32 or 34, I do not know, uh, <coughs> he, uh, he suddenly asked the question because um, this Pauli's neutrino he has introduced into his theory and these, are these neutrinos massive or not. The only experiment at that time <coughs> available to him was uh, the energy distribution of the uh, electrons, the beta uh, electrons coming from there, the number distribution was like this, the continuous distribution, you remember, this is the Q value. And this is the uh, difference in energy between uh, initial nuclear state and final nuclear state after taking out the neutrino, after taking out the electron mass. But if the neutrinos are massive, it will be a little bit this way because neutrino mass also has to be subtracted. But the experimental data are very uh, small here because numbers go down. So even, even from the <coughs> experimental data available at that time, Fermi had concluded in 1934 that the neutrino mass has to be much smaller than the electron mass. That is all you could say. Then successive experiments went on increasing it and uh, <coughs> uh, I will come to that story. Uh, <coughs> 
So, it was uh, thought that the neutrinos are massless, why the neutrinos are thought, thought massless I will not say right now, but the point is the standard model also supported it. The Higgs mechanism, all these things have to be explained further. The Higgs mechanism which gives mass to the W, mass to Z boson and all the quarks and all the <coughs> charged leptons, namely even electron mass, mu mass and mu tau, leaves neutrino massless. Why neutrino is picked out to be massless? That is an interesting story, I will describe it later. In standard model, neutrinos are massless. But neutrinos are now known to be massive and that is the importance of neutrinos because that tells you that standard model there is some chink you penetrate that that is what people are trying to do. Neutrino oscillation, the neutrino mass was discovered through neutrino oscillations. I am going to describe all this later, neutrino oscillation itself I will describe later. Neutrino oscillation was discovered in 1998 uh, by the Japanese uh, group working with a huge detector called Super K, Super Kamiokande, using atmospheric neutrinos. How does atmospheric neutrinos come? They are actually cosmic ray produced neutrinos. As I already mentioned, cosmic rays are nothing but very high energy protons impinging, uh, running around everywhere in the universe. So, they impinge on the upper part of our atmosphere, uh, collide with uh, nitrogen and oxygen nuclei and produce enormous number of particles. All those particles finally decay and the debris finally is neutrinos. And uh, it is through those neutrinos, uh, the neutrino oscillations were discovered by the Japanese in Super Kamioka. And uh, the atmospheric neutrinos therefore are cosmic reputation neutrinos. They were first detected in India in the Kolar gold fields. I already mentioned it, I think. using <coughs> cosmic ray produced neutrinos or atmospheric neutrinos, they are called atmospheric neutrinos, uh, <coughs> originally detected in the Kolar gold field mines deep underground. Kolar gold field mines in 1965. The sun also produces plenty of neutrinos. The thermonuclear fusion reactions which happen in the core of the sun which keeps us uh, alive uh, are really weak interactions. Four protons combine to form uh, helium-4 and uh, two neutrinos and uh, two uh, positrons. All that is described in my article. Please go and uh, look at it. And so, uh, <coughs> experimentalists like Davis, uh, Davis, Davis was the pioneer. Uh, so, solar neutrino, this is atmospheric neutrino, solar neutrino, well, actually solar neutrino started even earlier than this, 19, from 1970 uh, Davis et al, they managed to detect them, but at a depleted level, detected only about one third of what is calculated calculated neutrino plus formula sun. That uh, explanation for that also is oscillation, but one could not uh, jump to that conclusion because that calculated number was subjected to lot of theoretical uncertainty, that is what people thought because how do you know how many neutrinos are produced in the deep core of the sun? There was a standard solar model, Bakal et al had developed it and they claimed they were uh, accurate, but most people, uh, uh, I mean it was anyway indirect because we have to believe that theory in order to show that uh, uh, <coughs> two thirds of the neutrinos were oscillated away. So, if you believe it, oscillations were discovered here, but uh, you do not have to believe it because here, Although this started later, this is atmospheric neutrino 
experiments started much later, there they showed that there was an anomaly uh, in a ratio, namely number of nu mu's divided by number of nu e's, there was an anomaly. And since it was a ratio, it did not depend on the absolute flux of the neutrinos produced by cosmic rays. And hence, that was considered more believable. So, in the race, in the discovery of neutrino oscillations and through that the neutrino mass, it is atmospheric neutrino experimenter who won the race. But then this in solar neutrinos also <coughs> in 2002, the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory in Canada, Neutrino Observatory Canada <coughs> did experiments with the solar neutrinos and uh, they used the deuteron and hence they could detect both the charged current interaction of the neutrino from the sun and the neutral current interaction and that ratio is again independent of the absolute ratio. In that also they showed in fact uh, that definitely they, it is they who established that the solar neutrinos also oscillate. Not only that, they established that the thermonuclear fusion uh, theory of uh, suggested, first suggested by the hypothesis was first made by uh, Eddington, it was he who solved the problem of uh, uh, the, so the, the, the energy of the sun. All that history I have described in my article. Uh, and uh, the full theory was given by Bethe, Hans Bethe, the famous nuclear physicist. And, um, and the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory experiment. <coughs> uh, I call it a two in one experiment. Two in one experiment because they could detect the neutrinos through charged current and uh, neutral current process and hence they could uh, clinch the issue. I mean they, they could show that the neutrinos oscillate, they could show that the number of neutrinos actually <coughs> seen is exactly the number uh, uh, calculated in Bethe's theory, the standard solar model. <coughs> So all that uh, I cannot go, I think some of it I will describe later, but right now uh, this is all I will do. And from oscillations, one can show that the neutrinos will oscillate only if the neutrinos are uh, massive. So that is the important discovery. But actually oscillations do not determine the masses, it determines only the difference in square of the mass. And the results I will summarize here. There are three neutrinos I already mentioned, nu1, nu2, nu3 we called it. M2 squared minus M1 squared uh, <coughs> is found to be 7 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt squared and M3 squared minus M2 squared is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 3 electron volt square. This is the experimental result. See how tiny it is. And the actual neutrino mass, so you have to go back to this conventional experiment and uh, there also we have results. M nu, uh, <coughs> tritium beta decay. I do not know, I am going down and down, so let me go to this part. So more and more precise experiments uh, were done in all these uh, 100 years. Finally, the Katrin experiment used tritium beta decay. What does it do? H3 I think goes to helium 3 plus electron, uh, electron plus uh, anti neutrino. I mean, they have to choose a nucleus where the Q value is small so that uh, <coughs> uh, the experiments uh, are uh, sensitive to the small neutrino mass. See, we choose uh, some experiment where this Q value is very large. At that energy, you cannot measure energy that precisely to determine a neutrino mass. <coughs> so this was the this is the best one can do, and from this, Katrin 
in Germany, Katrin experiment, has shown that M nu is less than 1.5 electron volt, that is the present result. I think they can go to a fraction of an electron volt and or even they can even determine if the electron neutrino mass is of that type. So, you see that if you look at the particle masses, uh, this is million times uh, more than million times smaller than even electron mass. The electron mass is the lowest uh, massive particle uh, mass of ma massive particle in the whole particle physics data and this is even million times smaller. So, it is very tiny and that itself has important information. And so, the neutrino field has become <coughs> a very interesting field. The other thing I want to mention about um, uh, <coughs> neutrino is the na actual nature of the neutrino. Even after uh, 80 years after its birth, the fundamental nature of neutrino is not known. Is neutrino Majorana particle or uh, Dirac particles. If a fermion and anti fermion are different, like electron, the electron has to be different from positron because electron is charged, charge becomes opposite. Neutrino is not, uh, does not have charge. So, there is a possibility that the anti particle is the same. This possibility was raised by Ettore Majorana long ago. So, the such particles are called Majorana particles. In the whole standard model, if you look at the <coughs> quark list and the leptonic list, only neutrinos have the possibility of being a Majorana particle. And now it has become very important uh, because if neutrino is a Majorana particle, many problems get uh, solved. Uh, why the neutrino mass is tiny as a natural explanation if neutrino is Majorana particle. And, uh, uh, in fact, it has other connotations also in connection with the baryon asymmetry of the universe. So, uh, many, many of the uh, things get facilitated who need to know in some Majorana particle. So, theorists would like it to be Majorana particle, but, uh, but that important question does not have an answer. We have to experimentally answer whether need to know is Majorana particle or, uh, or uh, Dirac particle. See, if it is a Majorana particle, if the neutrino is a Majorana particle, the only way of showing it is by the so called uh, neutrino less double beta decay. I will just draw the diagram, but I uh, do not know <laughs> whether I can do anything more. Neutrino less double beta decay, neutrino less double beta decay. The search for this is going on for the past so many years. If neutrinos double beta decay occurs in nature, then neutrinos are Majorana. Now, it occurs like this. You see, you look at uh, actually, font size, size again has become small. Sorry. Is neutrino Majorana or Dirac? Majorana or Dirac particle? That is the question. To answer it, you have to search for neutrino less double beta decay. If it occurs, it is Majorana particle. Uh, see, single beta decay everybody knows, but uh, in some cases, uh, uh, <coughs> the nuclear uh, data will show that uh, the adjacent nuclear state is so high uh, and is higher energy, higher mass, and hence uh, the conventional beta decay does not happen. Then, it is in some cases, it turns out that uh, a single beta decay does not occur, but double beta decay occurs. What is double beta decay? Instead of one neutron inside the nucleus decay, in two nucleons, two neutrons decay. So, let me see whether I can draw it. This is the electron and then uh, neutrino. This is just a single beta decay. This may not happen in a certain nucleus because the nuclear state uh, containing this neutron uh, may, may have lower energy than the nuclear state, the final nuclear state. In that case, take simultaneously another neutron also if it decays.
So, these are nucleus in the nucleus 2 decay simultaneously occur in neutrino, proton and another electron. So, if 2 neutrinos come out, then this is uh, called uh, double beta decay, simply double beta decay. But if neutrino is it so double beta decay. So, this is called a 2 neutrino double beta decay. If neutrino is the same as anti neutrino, then the two neutrinos can annihilate each other like particle and antiparticle annihilate. So, let me draw that. the two neutrinos can annihilate each other. So, it becomes only an internal line, the neutrino becomes an internal line, you do not see the neutrino. So, only electrons come out. So, <clears throat> if only electrons come out without uh, neutrino, this is called NDBD. This is possible only if the neutrino is uh, Majorana particle. So, people have been searching for this for the last 50 years or so, many experiments are going on, but so far no conclusive evidence is happening. Even the INO lab uh, which is supposed to come up in the uh, Tenny district uh, in South India uh, will search for NDBD. So, <clears throat> that is the importance of NDBD, but it is a fact that the fundamental nature of neutrino is still not uh, known unfortunately. Okay. So, that is all uh, my uh, <coughs> Uh, discussion of uh, weak interactions, except that of course, I am going to take up standard model now and standard model will contain the electrovic theory. Uh, more detailed uh, discussion of how the electrovic theory is constructed, I am going to give. So, <clears throat> from now on, I am going to start on gauge theory. Uh, so, anybody who has questions on whatever I did so far can ask me now. So, this is seen, dozens of examples are, they are searching for it, not yet seen. If it is uh, seen, that will be a great discovery because you would have proved that neutrinos are Majorana particles. So, I am now going to <coughs> try to build up the standard model. First, some uh, general notions about uh, uh, gauge invariance, non abelian gauge invariance, uh, <coughs> and then uh, Fontaine symmetry breaking and Higgs mechanism, uh, all that I I have to do and then I have to connect all these things and construct the standard model. So, here, um, here I have a, a series of lectures I gave uh, building up the standard model of high energy physics. Those lectures I have, uh, uh, I think uh, Satya has a copy of it. If Satya can find out some way by which he can give it to all those who want, that will be nice. So, maybe you can send the, the it is not a, a very big uh, uh, <coughs> thing, maybe uh, less than 50 pages or so. So, I am going to, yeah, I can, I can share, I can share yeah if Satya can share that to uh, others whomsoever want to see it, that will help because when I am, when they listen to me, they can go back to the actual written version also. So, here I have one question. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. 
Halo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. If uh, they are coming together, yeah. And if uh, let's say, uh, consider for example the spin state of these electrons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if they are different, yeah. The, the, the annihilation does it depend? Yeah, yeah. The annihilation rate depends on the relative spin orientation. If the electron and positron are in singlet state, total singlet state, spin zero, or triplet state, uh, I don't know which is uh, uh, which is uh, has higher probability. But uh, that is a well known question in quantum electrodynamics. It is known, it is given in books. Right now, I do not remember. So, singlet state and the triplet state will annihilate at different rates, but they will annihilate. Okay, so in that case, since neutrino is yeah. uh, the, the double beta decay experiment that you have just now discussed. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, uh, see I used that picture, uh, that neutrino which I draw, drew vertically, uh, that was a virtual neutrino. It is not really the new, uh, real neutrino created and uh, real anti neutrino created, right. Two neutrinos, but if neutrinos are Majorana particle, two neutrinos, uh, uh, <coughs> I mean this diagram which I drew with the neutrino internal line connecting both is possible only if neutrino is Majorana particle. To explain it, I used the idea uh, that uh, they, they are particle and antiparticle, they annihilate since particle and antiparticle are the same, okay. So, do not push it to, to too much. Uh, if if Majorana, if neutrino is a Majorana particle, this diagram is possible in which neutrino 